against uh, Rafael Uti. So it's going to be uh, Germany against Brazil for this one. Yep, we have our first European player on the stream in a match right now. Jan on the left is going to be playing, as we were talking about, that Arceus Duraludon. Mm, so the, now now we get to see it in full action. We get to see you know, the, the merits it has, the power it has uh, you know, against the metagame. And uh, we're just going to get confirmation of Raphael's deck as well. But I do believe he is playing the, the Lugia deck. We can just yeah, I do believe that is the case. We're going to confirm that shortly, though. And, and we'll see oh, exactly yeah, how this matchup yes. plays out. I do think that Raphael has answers here. Looks like we've got the uh, Lost Vacuum in the deck, and we talked about that, and a key card in the prizes for Yen, that big like, parasol. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's absolutely huge. So that's uh, he's not going to want to see that. It uh, means that he's going to have a harder time finding it when he needs to. Now, I imagine we'll be playing multiple copies, so just prizing just the one mm -hmm. shouldn't be a problem. Yes, yes, but two copies for sure. Yes, uh, and uh, we do see there, just looking at, looking at the list, uh, yes, two. So he still has access to one, thankfully. Yep, this yeah. is going to be great, and we're getting into this match. It does look like Jan is going first, which is a huge advantage here for the Arceus Duraludon player. Yeah, so we're starting off with that double turbo energy as well, so really st starting off well, and uh, actually, that's all he needs is you know what, double turbo energy and pass, but that means no Duraludon down, which is not very great. Not ideal at all. Now, I did watch one of Jan's games out in the field in the last round, and they play a very interesting card. They play a copy of Thornton. So there is a oh. way to get an extra Duraludon into play through that card. Wow, okay. So yeah, of course, so Thornton letting you choose a basic Pokemon in your discard pile and switch it with one of your basic Pokemon in play with any you know attached cards, damage counters, special conditions, etc., transferring onto the new one. But because it's treated as you know a Pokemon that's been in play for a turn when that happens, you can say switch an Arceus for a Duraludon and then evolve straight into a Duraludon VMAX. Yes. So Raphael now grabbing the Lugia V out of the deck with an Ultra Ball, and this Ultra Ball did lose a double turbo, which is less than ideal, but did also discard an Archeops, which is exactly what this deck aims to do. Yeah, I want to get, uh, as we've seen so many times already, get uh, two Archeops in the discard pile as quickly as possible so you can get the maximum value out of that summoning star, V-star power. But it looks like uh, after this, uh, Raphael is going to be putting uh, puts down the Lugia with a powerful color synergy. does have a Crobat to put down as well, drawing a decent amount of cards with a Dark Asset, but... Not really, looks like you see that lost vacuum there ready in hand. Uh, Raphael's going to want to make sure to keep access to that as long as he can so that he can get rid of that big parasol. And he's seeing an Arceus, you've got to think if you're Raphael, you're already starting to, you know, bear that in mind a little bit. Yeah, what exactly could my opponent have in their deck? And most likely Arceus Duraludon. It seems like the most popular way to play Arceus right now in the current meta. So decent turn here for Raphael. Leaving the Raikou in the active, you know, it's something you don't really mind if it gets KO'd. Not going to be too big of a deal. You definitely don't want to let Elugia take a hit, necessarily. And over on Yan's side, going with the Chorus's experiment, I do think there is a Duraludon V in there. Does seem that way. And yeah, very easy uh, loss zone choices there for Yan. Just going to loss on that, dra that Drapion V. Don't need that. And, uh, and the Bird Keeper doesn't need that right now, either. It does have that Thornton in the hand, so that could be an interesting play at some point. I don't know if it'll come up in this spot specifically, but maybe we'll see it at some point later on. Now, the big question here, is there an out to Arceus V-Star in this hand? I, I see something that could maybe vaguely look like an Evolution Intense. Well, I think that, there's a Duraludon in there for sure. Okay. But, yeah, no, I don't necessarily... you think if there was the out to the V-Star, you would have slammed it down at this point, but... And especially with this energy attachment going to the bench, it doesn't look like we'll be seeing a Trinity Nova. No, so maybe just a Trinity Charge instead? Yeah. Which is okay. Yeah, it's not ideal, of course. Uh, just lets you attach uh, free energy, basic energies from your deck to your V-Pokemon any way you like, but really not getting that damage in and not being able to evolve into that V-Star and use that important V-Star power, of course, Star Birth. One, still one of the first V-Star powers that was revealed and still arguably one of, one of, if not the best. Yeah, absolutely. Just the ability to grab any two cards out of your deck and load them in to play is so incredibly strong, especially with decks like this where you're hoping to find specific pieces in specific matchups like the big parasols, as we mentioned. Now, the Trinity Charge was able to load up two energies not only onto the Duraludon V, but also adding one additional energy to this active Arceus V as well so that... Jan will have options for either of those two cards. Yeah, and this bodes quite well, right? Because what this means now is that uh, on the outside, no matter which one gets KO'd, whether the Arceus V or the Dratlon V gets KO'd, there's still some kind of attacking pressure that can be mounted next turn. Of course, he'd rather 
bring out the Dural on uh, VMAX if you can, and so I'm sure that what Rafael will be looking for this turn is to some kind of card to bring up the Dural on V and KO it, KO it. Yeah, this is a massive opening, absolutely, for Rafael, and this is exactly why this matchup can still go in Lugia's favor, even though on paper it should be a favored matchup. If you can find a Serena or Boss's Orders in combination with getting a bunch of Archeops in the discard pile, you can potentially take a quick lead. Now, it looks like Serena is being played, but it is for that first effect. It, of course, can bring up a Pokemon V on the bench, but it can also discard cards from your hand up to three and then draw cards until you have five. So it's a great way to bail you out if you have kind of an unfortunate hand, which must have been the case here for Raphael. Yeah, it's a bit of a missed opportunity here for him, obviously. Uh, not, not being able to carry the Drowled on V, but of course, this is one of the benefits of Serena. It is the fact that, you know, in a situation where you do need to be bailed out and you can't go for the ideal play, you can still draw cards and find it your setup at least, and that's one of the reasons why Serena is so good. And this can still be just fine for Raphael, right? Take two prizes here on this Arceus V. Jan sends up the Duraludon V, and if they're not able to find a Parasol, especially would be made much harder now that there's no access to Starbirth, yeah, yeah. you're maybe in a just fine spot if you can uh, get that amazing rare Evil Tall all set up and powered up, ready to go. Yeah, I'm sure that Raphael will be thinking about exactly that as we do see the first Primal Turbo there being fired off. Just going to put two powerful Colors energies onto the bench, uh, Lugia V-Star, and then once again with the second Primal Turbo, probably just going to get yeah one energy to retreat the Raikou. Not really an attacker that he wants to use in this matchup. Not at all. Now, I do think we still need one more energy onto the Lugia, but Raphael has not attached for turn yet, and there is the V-Guard energy coming down. Very important, of course. Uh, I don't think it necessarily helps too much with the math against Duraludon VMAX, but you know, having on there yeah. is still a nice boon. And, and also Duraludon VMAX's attack hits through effects, so it actually doesn't even oh, yeah, worry point. about the, the damage on... But it can matter, of course, against Arceus's potentially. Raphael takes an early lead, though. Two prizes taking out that Arceus V-Star. What does Jan have there as the top deck of the Duraludon? That Skyscraper ability is going to potentially slow things down. But there's a chance that Raphael could just win the game this next turn. I don't know if there's much else. Oh, not anymore, though, with oh, that boss's orders. Yes. This will target the Archeops, and now there's not going to be an option for that Evil Toll. Yeah, that's very, very clever, actually. Very heads up play from Yan, recognizing, okay, if Evil Toll is the thing that I'm scared of. What powers it up? Archeops. I'll just KO that instead. Yeah, that's a super, super heads up play on their side of the field. Now, there's no path to the peaks or anything like that from Raphael. There is, like, the Collapse Stadium. That's not going to be too relevant here. Um, it's got to be really just the evil tall to get powered up, and you're going to have to, at this point, bench it and charge it up with a Primal Turbo and just hope your opponent doesn't have back-to-back -back boss's orders. Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, you know, from Yan's side, uh, look, you're saying he wants to make sure that he has a backup attacker as well, just in case, obviously, Raphael does, uh, is able to find some out. You know, Yan doesn't know if Raphael plays around in Path to the Peak, for example, sure. so he wants to keep himself a little bit safe. Yeah, play around anything your opponent could possibly have. And eyeing up the Arceus V is interesting as well. This can maybe try to set up for the V Star on the future turns. Absolutely, uh, absolutely it could. And uh, interesting enough, yeah, and Yan does actually just opt to just go for, yeah, the Arceus V that be there. And uh, like I said, maybe later on trying to, you know, go for a Star Birth just to find some key pieces. So it's still important to be able to go for that. Yeah, and even if Raphael did find a way to knock out this Duraludon in the next couple of turns, Yan yeah, sitting on that Thornton already in the hand with yes. another Duraludon VMAX. So that's kind of an interesting thing as well. Uh, there are all lots of uh, factors here to consider as uh, Yan does take the knockout, and uh, now it's going to be back on Raphael to try and find a way to answer this skyscraper <laughs> of a Duraludon VMAX. Yeah, and I think the way, like I said, is bench that Evil Tall and cross your fingers. Hope that there is not a second boss's orders in your opponent's hand. Now, something that is interesting and certainly worth noting is that some players do choose to play Serena as opposed to boss's orders. This is something that Raphael's probably thinking of. There is a chance that if Yen has access to Serena but not boss, that Evil Tall would be safe there on the bench, right? Yeah, that's definitely going to be something you consider, and, you know, a lot of lists have made that switch, so it's a reasonable gamble, I guess you could take in that sort of sense. And Yen does play a split. One Serena and three boss's orders, and that is something that could come back to bite them here. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see which one uh, they find, I guess, as uh, uh, Raphael, in the meantime, finds the Luminion V and goes for the Luminous Sign. Uh, didn't actually quite see what, oh, where he went for Oh, yeah, he has Going actually for it here. now, yep, and there the Serena. Is. And this is a great option as well, as this... There's nothing that Raphael can do to the active Duraludon, but 
Serena can bring up this Arceus V, and that's a quick, pretty easy two prizes. Yeah, and now the ideal turn, of course, would be use the Serena to bring up the Arceus Kira, whilst at the same time getting the Evelto and starting to power up, so that yes. way you're taking some prizes and advancing your tempo and your you know, game plan, whilst at the same time preparing yourself to get the final lockout on the thing that the, none of your Pokemon can usually touch. Yes, exactly. That is what we are hoping to see on Raphael's side, and Yan is hoping to see a little bit of help from the top here. Maybe the big Parasol, that would be a, a huge find for sure. At a minimum, though, Yan is feeling probably still okay in this spot, not out of it yet. The hand is not super strong. Looks like a couple Pokemon, a couple energies, and the Thornton. It will just be a G-Max Pulverization, dealing 220 damage as V-Guard energy, yeah, is not affected. Does hit through effects. Yeah, yeah so it's going to be the full 2 squads there, um, unfortunately, for Raphael. Is it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Now we've got the fixed number of damage. But um, there was no Yveltal down last turn, though, so now Raphael needs to kind of find it, start charging up, and uh, like we were saying before, hope that Yan can't find a boss's orders before the Yveltal gets charged up. Raphael actually going for... Okay, there it is. Pulled the Lugia to the front for a second, but it will be Yveltal. That is definitely the better thing to grab here. And with no recovery in Raphael's list, if Yan does have access to a boss, and I think it would have to be through a top deck here, then Yan would, I think, be in a just fine spot. But... Uh, and probably just win the game, honestly. But if this Evil is allowed to remain on the field for a turn and can just be tra charged up once again on the next turn, now only needing one more energy in t order to be able to attack. You don't even need Archeops necessarily. Yan's draw for turn was not a boss. It no. was a Marnie. Marnie not going to do it. As uh, I mean, it's still going to be the card that Yan plays, but uh, really needed to KO that Evil this turn, and that's now no longer on the cards. Not at all. Marnie, I mean, at this point now, hoping to find the big parasol. Maybe if the big parasol comes down, there's a chance that you can fight back. Maybe if your opponent does not play a lost vacuum or they can't find it. I don't think I see one here no. in this hand. I see a hyper potion. I see, I think a couple of Arceus V stars would like to maybe see that earlier, but no, just G Max polarization. And then, isn't that basically the game? It could be. Now, Yan, you know, might as well play it out for just the last few seconds here. There is always a chance Raphael could have prized a bunch of energy cards, but we. Should see the win here. Just needs one more Aurora. There's another there one is. for good measure. And that amazing destruction just knocks out Arceus Duraludon. And Raphael goes up 1-0 in this game. And what were we saying before about how, in spite of it being a counter deck, we can just still beat Arceus Duraludon? There is a masterclass yes. in exactly how that goes. Yep, exactly how it can go. Now, Yan did start kind of shakily uh, early on. Just kind of had an Arceus. Didn't get a Duraludon super quickly. Never found the Arceus V-Star. So it wasn't the best showing from the Arceus Duraludon deck. But that is what that deck can do from yeah. time to time, and I think that's one of the reasons players kind of tend to stray away from it. Because, you know, and this is true of a lot of, like, counter decks that have popped up over the, over the years, right? It's one of those things where, yeah, they, they are built in a way to beat what could be the best deck in the format, but sometimes the best deck in the format, or, like, the most popular deck, is just so strong, and it's so, you know, has it enough things going for its own side that even the counter deck sometimes can just fold to it. Yes, and that was a great setup of games from Raphael, setup of turns, I should say, being able to take out two Arceus and then the one out on VMAX to close out the game. And something else to note, Raphael did not have to reveal the Lost Vacuum in that game. No. So that's something that Yan doesn't even know that Raphael has in his arsenal. That's a very good point. Yeah, in that game, it was just a matter of, you know, Lugia be able to like win without you know, the answer out, as it were. Um, so now Yan is going to have to like, you know, maybe bear that in mind and think, oh, okay, I lost this game even though I wasn't able to like draw my usual, you know, ideal setup. Maybe he has something to counter even the ideal setup and I need to make sure that I take that into account when I'm doing my thing. Yeah, we'll see if things can go a little better for Yen in this one. I think the ideal setup is just getting a turn two Arceus, having two Duraludon down, getting double big Parasol into play. And I think if Yan can do that, they probably just win the game. Looking at how these lists are built, Raphael doesn't really have anything for two Duraludon no. with both of them having the big parasol on them. So if that can happen, I think Yan is just going to probably win the game. Yeah, so I'm sure that's the ideal setup that Yan would like to go for. So we do see uh, Mulligan from Yan's side. Of course, he will be going first in this game, so that will help a lot as well. Just, uh, you know, as long as he can find uh, those uh, early basics, he'll be good to go. Absolutely. Yep, all about getting those Pokemon into play. And I think also with this deck, it's all about starting Arceus V. You don't really want to start Duraludon V no. with this deck uh, because of how important Trinity Nova is. If at a minimum, just Trinity Charge as well being a really strong option, which we saw Trinity Charge, you know, getting a bunch of energies in play in the last game. So really fingers crossed here for Yan that there's not a Duraludon in the active. Yeah, and we 
we'll see now he has uh, he draws the opening hand again and does it. Oh, another mulligan. Yeah, and this will happen with this deck from time to time. You do only play a handful of basics, the four Arceus V, the two Duraludon V, and Yan also is playing one copy of Drapion V, which is pretty interesting. It does decrease your chances to start the Arceus V, but it probably increases your Mew matchup decently. I mean, yeah, but Drapion is one of those very easily insertable counters that uh, increases your new matchup favorability by so much. Uh, even if it's just to take, you know, free prizes and then it gets knocked out in return, gets lost zone, that's still like an easy free prizes that you can take with it that makes it worth the include. Yeah, and if your opponent isn't playing Lost City, which is a stadium that most new players feels like have moved away from, maybe some of the Fusion Strike lists are still on that card. Um, it'll still be included from time to time. You can Thornton it back yeah. into play. You can Thornton the Drapion and put it back into play once again. And actually, and, and equally, uh, sort of, even if kind of on the same point, if you start with Drapion, but you can get another good base in this card, they can fall to the Drapion away into something good. The Thornton plays are just unbelievable, to be honest. They really are. So, yeah, prizing on both sides uh, doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Nothing like really, really vital. So maybe, you know, one of the things that you play multiple copies of. So workable, I'd say. Yeah, we saw Boss being a really important piece for Yan in that first game, so having one of those up in the top of the prizes is a little awkward. It makes it less likely you'll have access to it early on when you may want it. But it looks like the start has been pretty good for Yan, as there is an Arceus in the active with an energy on it. And a few more cards to think about playing as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Arceus plus energy is like the baseline, right? As long as you've got that, the rest uh, you can kind of like take or leave. And yeah, Yan is pretty happy. Oh, actually, it does have a Duraldo on the bench as well. So this Very is, good. So it's actually a really, really good start here. Like, uh, better than game one, even. Absolutely. Now, Raphael will start it off with an evolution incense, searching out any evolution Pokemon and adding it to the hand. Got to feel like this will grab that Archaeops right away. And potentially, if Raphael has a way to just discard it, that would be great on this turn as well. Yeah, even if it's just to, like, read the wind, obviously, it's never an ideal attack to use. But if you're going second, it can be a good option just sure. to draw some extra cards and get the Archaeops in, dis in the discard pile. But so would ideally like to do something else. And you know, Raphael's hand does look pretty stacked here. Looks like there is going to be, yeah, an Ultra Ball, actually, just discarding a... Radiant Charizard and the Archeops. Radiant Charizard being a really great attacker, but not so much in this matchup. Yeah, it's not the best in this matchup. It could come into play if your opponent has a Duraludon V on the bench that hasn't become the VMAX quite yet, but more than likely your opponent's going to get more set up than that. Yeah, indeed. Now, Raphael can totally go for the Read the Wind here because there's not really a way for Yan to take a knockout on this active Lugia V, right? No, um, it's true. So it would be okay to go for Read the Wind. You would increase the hand size and also ditch a Archaeops for the turn, set yourself up nicely for the future. And I think this hand actually has a ton of energy cards in it. So regardless of if Raphael wanted to go for it or not, I think it may be the only option. Yeah, you may be right. There you go. Powerful Colors Energy plus the Choice Belt. And yeah, just straight away, Read the Wind. To, again, that's, that's two Archaeops in the discard pile. Pretty good. Oh my goodness, I think Raphael drew two more energy cards off that what? in the Amazing Rare Evil Tall. I'm pretty sure that their hand is like five energy cards plus Evil Tall. That is, uh, that is less than ideal. Probably going to want to find Amani sooner rather than later, <laughs> yeah. I would say. Absolutely. Now, Yan's side able to play that Colrus's Experiment. It's always interesting to me the decks that choose to play Colrus's Experiment when they're not wanting to actively Lost Zone cards, right? Like this deck does not really want to put cards in the Lost Zone. But it turns out just seeing five cards off the top of your deck is pretty good. Yeah, it's a very interesting development that we saw, like, uh, the Arceus Gudra decks uh, kind of yes. took this path as well, and it seems the same with Arceus Drowdon, is that it's better to keep your hand and add three more from a pool of five rather than discard your whole hand and draw seven. Now, one of the key cards off that chorus was the big parasol. It is already here, and we see Yan putting it down right away, recognizing how vital it is. I don't know that I see an out to a Duraludon VMAX, though. No, and not, not to an Arceus V-Star either, so they're yeah, gonna, gonna have to be Happy with just attaching another metal to the active and just going for the Trinity Charge, which is okay, but it's really not where you want to be, ideally, because now there's an opportunity again for Raphael to use a Serena or a Boss's Orders to bring up the Duraludon and KO it. Yeah, that would be massive. Now, the Duraludon V does have the Hard Coat ability, which means it takes 30 less damage from attacks. But Raphael's already prepped for that. Got the Choice Belt on the active and the Powerful Color Synergy. It is going to be pretty easy for a Lugia V-Star to take the knockout. Let's see if Raphael can do anything. Actually, now that we're mentioning it, I don't know that there's really anything Raphael could top deck that really aids him to do that in this spot because we know that the hand is like five energy cards. Well, I mean, getting a Lugia V-Star would be good, pretty good, right? Because, right, uh, yeah. but I don't think you're going to be able to target the Duraludon this turn. Okay, no, not unless you already have like a Serena or a Boston hand, but I don't recall seeing one. No, I don't yeah. think so. Okay, so there, oh, another Lugia V. That's really not what you want. Um, looks like another Read the Wind to me. That's, oh, that's actually really unfortunate. And that feels so bad in a spot, especially like this one where your opponent, I mean, this would be such a big opening for Raphael, but his deck is failing him in this spot. Oof, yeah, that, that's really, really rough. And 
Yeah, that's what you did. He draws the Arceus V Star for turn. Wow, that is a huge draw, especially now with this active Lugia V having so many energies committed to it. Yan could just switch into a Duraludon VMAX here. What a huge top deck. That Starbirth V Star power being so incredibly powerful. That is absolutely enormous. And we see there the Chorus experiment as well. It, it really is not going to take a lot. I mean, at this point, yeah, you don't even bother with Trinity Nova. You just go straight into oh, yeah. the... Uh, Let's the KO this Lugia, for K sure. K KO this Lugia with a thing that can't be touched by anything with special energy. Like, uh, th 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 I, I like those... Uh, <laughs> I like that scenario. <laughs> Sounds like a good play to me, yes. honestly. And I like the sequencing decision as well from Yen. Playing the Chorus's Experiment before utilizing that Starbirth V-Star power because you want to see five cards before you go select two specific ones out of your deck. Because what if, you know, you went for Starbirth first, got a Duraludon VMAX, and then you used Chorus and found your other one, right? It would yeah. feel like you wasted your Starbirth. Yeah, so it's always important to like, go for like the more unknown search or dig first before you get, go for the guaranteed one. Yes, yes. Do your unknowns before you do things that are known quantities, for sure. Good rule of thumb in the Pokemon TCG. Yeah, we do see there the Ultra Ball uh, grabbing that Duraludon VMAX straight away, discarding a Drapion and a Fortin, both cards that I think uh, Jan has no interest in using at this point in time. Not at all. And Duraludon VMAX is up and running, and we still have not seen that V-Star power be utilized. Could honestly hold off on doing it. Just attach or treat, go in like that. Or, I mean, if you really want to as well, you could just uh, go attach, attach the Choice Belt and take a care with the Arceus V-Star as well. There's no Double Turbo. This is true. This is true. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Double Turbo did not have to be used. I will say in this spot, I mean, it makes sense to do it like this. I guess you might as well. But it would be really nice if you could do this and put energies onto a Bench Duraludon V. So maybe we'll see yeah, and go for the Starbirth to do that specifically. I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, uh, actually, no, just saving it. Okay. Just, yes, uh, saying, okay, Trinity Nova is enough, and maybe going to attach you know, a couple of energies just to make a Hyper Potion easier later. Could be, sure. could, be a, could be a move. Yeah, it seems like a decent play. We see one Hyper Potion already there in the Lost Zone, but there are multiple in this deck. Definitely a really important card that we see plenty of in this Arceus Duraludon deck, playing three copies here in Yan's list. Yep, and there it is, just the one fighting energy being attached onto the bench Duraludon V. Oh, is look it at this goes. hand from Raphael. There's just nothing happening. Yeah, and Raphael's oh. going to concede it. What a missed opportunity there when your opponent just had the perfect start for you to be able to capitalize, and your hand just had so many energies. Yeah, and got much more set up. It was a turn slower, I think, than they would have liked, but they're still able to win game two here, and we're going into game three. And with so many cards in hand as well. I mean, Raphael's hand size was absolutely enormous, yes. I mean, yet not a single one of those cards was actually helpful in the you know, helping him smell a comeback. Yeah, let's give that deck a real good shuffle here, Raphael. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mix those energies up nice. And, uh, yeah, try to draw a new hand of seven and hope that this next game um, will go better in your favor. Now, at this spot, there is plenty of time left for a full game three to complete. Both of these players will have plenty of time remaining, so not expecting any ties to go down unless something absolutely wild <laughs> happens. Yeah, no, not in this kind of matchup. I think uh, no. the back and forth happens a bit too quickly between these two. So, yeah, we're going to see a completed uh, match here, I'm sure, as well. And, you know, at least the same grace here for Rafael is that, of course, in game three, given that he lost game two, he will be able to go first. So maybe that leaves an opening for Jan to do a Trinity charge with the sure. Arcus V, but it means that he'll be able to get out of his new gear pretty quickly. Yes, and it's going to all depend on that opening hand. Of course, no supporter being able to be played on that first turn when you're going first, so Lugia can sometimes struggle in those spots. You obviously want to go first, but you're just kind of hoping that in this opening hand, okay, hopefully there's an Evolution Incense and a Quick Ball or Ultra Ball, some way to just get an Archaeops down, maybe a supporter for the next turn. And, of course, wanting to find a way to get a Lugia V into play is the premium, most important thing. Yeah, it absolutely is, and uh, I think... Uh I think Raphael's taking your advice, giving that deck a real good shuffle right now, making sure that uh, we don't get a repeat of what happened in uh, <laughs> yeah. game game two there. Yeah, let's mix those cards up real nicely. And a little bit of a discussion here with the judge, just figuring things out. Looks like judge shuffle happening here. <laughs> and we're all good, and we'll get into game three here shortly. Yes, we will. So I think we're, we're both in both those games, we kind of you know, saw how the matchup could very easily... Well, we saw how the deck that's unfavored can you know, pull it back and win and how, in, how it might go in other situations where, you know, the counter deck is running on all cylinders. Yes. Do we, what are we expecting to see in game three here? Like, you know, I do still have to give the consistency edge a little bit to the Arceus deck just because it has ability to utilize that star birth V-star power. But of all the Arceus decks, I definitely think Arceus Duraludon is the least consistent of them. There's nothing like Crobat or Intellion or... Viberel in this deck to add to your consistency, especially in the early game. So you're really relying on getting an Arceus early and hoping you can find a V-Star on turn two. 
Yeah, and, it, and it's funny how, you know, the most successful architects recently have gravitated towards this because you'd think, oh, consistency is king always, you know, the more consistent your deck is, the more likely you are to polish your deck strategy and win. But by virtue of how these decks operate with the tankability, you kind of have to build the deck and play it this way and just kind of hope that you'll be seen through. Oh, Yan has prized a big parasol once again. Oh, that is dear. definitely something that could come into play, but we're getting into this game. Looks like it's a decent start here. Raphael did go first, started a Lugia, attached an energy, and has now passed it back over to Yan. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, I mean, it is still Lugia turn one, so I'd say, like, as starts go, it's still pretty okay. But now it's going to be on Yan to see. Oh, the Yan, wow. Does find the one big parasol in the deck in this opening hand. That has got to feel pretty good. Yeah, and be able to put it on the Drowled on V straight away as well. And now probably going to be debating on the Marnie. Let's play Crystal K first, but yeah, then just Marnie's way the rest of his hand. Just going to try and find, well, ideally, an energy. Obviously, you want to have an energy on the Arceus V so you can do a. Trinity over next turn. Yeah, Crystal Cave is not really a card that matters in this matchup because if your dragon type Pokemon are taking damage, they are usually being KO'd. Yeah, right? yes. So you're not really going to be getting any healing. Yan is able to find a double turbo energy to Trinity Charge, but the other four cards are also energy. Oh my goodness. That's. <laughs> it's literally all energy. <laughs> it's all energy. Four basic energy in Yan's hand. That is not what you want to see. Now, over on Raphael's side, this. Hand is not the best. It had a, an okay turn one, got a Lugia and an energy on it, but no Archaeops in the discard pile. I think that Raphael's only draw out in hand might be a Serena. There is at least a Archaeops there, or an Evolution Instance to get an Archaeops theoretically in the hand. Let's see what this draw for turn is after Jan is finished Oof. shuffling. Going to be a very, very big draw here for Raphael. He needs to find something to bail him out. So does Jan, though, to be fair, with a hand like that. Oh, goodness. Yes, not ideal. Draw for turn is an evolution instance. That is actually a huge oh, draw. Oh, yes. Raphael here has a couple of options. You could either get just two Archaeops, or you could get an Archaeops and a Lugia into play. What do you think is going to be the go-to play here for Raphael? There is merit to both. Uh, obviously, the greedier play would be to go for double Archaeops and then Serena, because then if you don't hit Lugia, you'll you know, very much sad times. But it might be worth it, potentially, because you really want to have double Archaeops out to be able to yes. get out the... Your Veltor powered up easily, especially knowing that Yan is very much playing heads up and you know, using boss orders to KO the Archaeops we saw in game one. So, yeah, uh, yeah, there's definitely merits. Yeah. It to almost feels up. like going for the Lugia would be overly safe. I think you kind of have to get the double Archaeops I, down here, yeah. right? It, there is, it, it's always funny with Pokemon T TCG because there's instances where, you know, you saw playing it safe is much better, but there are some instances where you have to accept actually the, the in quotes, greedier play is the correct one on the basis of the matchup I'm facing or the circumstances of the current game state. Yep, and we did see Raphael just flash that lost vacuum, wanted to make sure it was in the deck. Sure enough, it is available as that big parasol is already on the Duraludon V on the bench. Yeah, and maybe as well the fact that the, the big parasol is already on the bench is a factor in as well because Raphael's thinking to himself, okay, so now the I need to make sure to thin out as much as possible and draw as much as possible with Serena and uh, yeah, make sure I can find my lost vacuum as quickly as possible as we Definitely. saw there, Raphael able to just flashing it quickly to, to us so we can see it's in there. But well, we knew that already. <laughs> yep. Now, there is an energy card in hand. We could see Raphael attach it for turn here. We'll do that, and Serena will draw the full five cards. The only thing Raphael really needs here is a Lugia V-Star or a way to get one. Let's see it. One, two, three. That's Lost Vacuum, four, five. I don't think I see how it's Lugia V-Star. Wow, no Ultra Ball, no Incense, and no Lugia. It's another Read the Wind. Is uh, that what we're going to see here? I, I think it's going to have to be, yeah. I mean, you know, you can just discard the Radiant Charizard here. It's, you know, probably the best option to discard. It's very not useful, so at least that's a good discard fodder. But yeah, big, big miss from Raphael here. And a big opening for Yan. Now, let's not forget, Yan has four energy cards in hand. Oh, but the top deck of what? the Arceus V-Star. That is incredible. Possibly the best top deck Yan could have had. Oh, my goodness. Arceus V-Star off the top. And now Yan can just get absolutely everything he needs and set up perfectly. <laughs> this is huge. Now, we'll attach to the active. Let's see what Yan goes for here. There's a couple of options we could see. A Marnie plus a Duraludon be a grab, right? Then you yeah. can just retreat into the Duraludon, take this knockout, and send your opponent's large hand to the bottom of the deck. Um, anything else you really would expect to see? That feels like a pretty strong play to me. I, I think that, that feels like both the strongest, I think the most obvious thing to do, right? Or maybe considering a boss's orders? That's, I mean, surely you want to KO the Lugia with the most energy, right? That seems to be the... Yeah, that definitely seems to be the most threatening thing yeah. at the moment. And it's not like the active Arceus is going to be able to KO the Lugia V on the bench. No, I think you see there, maybe change his mind a little bit. Maybe just like wanted to look at the bosses just to see what was available to him. And 
I actually didn't quite see what I, you grabbed. I think it was the Duraludon and the Colrus. So oh. as opposed to going for anything like a Marnie to put those energies back into the deck, we're just going to see Colrus and try to increase that hand size. It's kind of what we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah. These decks don't really like to minimize their hand. They just want to add more cards to their hand. Yeah, so Colrus is going to be able to do exactly that. So, yeah, the very, very sensible move, I think, here from Yan. And, I mean... In this situation as well, it was kind of there wasn't really that much that he needed right from the start, but it was mainly just like Dural on and then something to dig for more cards. So the chorus here does make complete sense. Absolutely. Now this will let Raphael keep a pretty large hand, so that is something to consider as a potential downside. Now off the chorus, some interesting choices. There's the switch in hand. That could be good right now. You probably want to hang on to the Duraludon V Max as well. Yeah, but I think the Arcus V the other Arcus V stock can probably go right. I don't think you quite need that at this point in time. We actually, we've neglected to mention, uh, Raphael did actually draw a Lugia V-Star off of the Read the Wind, so he has that ready for next turn to just evolve that bench Lugia nice and actually, it. you know, get those Archeopses out. So that'll be good for him at least to make a start to make a recovery. And we will just see the Trinity Nova. This, this is kind of interesting. I guess you don't want to just put your Duraludon up and open yourself up to being, you know, hit by the Lost Vacuum plus Evil Tall play, so that could be the reason that we're seeing Yan hold off on just taking the knockout. Yeah, there's definitely merit to this line of play, I think, for that exact reason. So, And also loading up more energy onto the Duraldon as well to, again, enable like, Hyper Potion shenanigans maybe, although, as mentioned before, I think it's unlikely that... It, I mean, if the Duraldon's being affected, it's being knocked out because it's being affected by your Veltal, So, But I guess it does get the extra energies out of the deck anyway. Draw for turn. Now plenty of options for Raphael with a massive hand. A couple of Archeops already being brought to the front. We know what that likely means. Summoning Star, that powerful new V-Star power of this Lugia V-Star. Bringing those two colorless Pokemon from the discard pile into play. And now Primal Turbo can grab any two special energy out of the deck and attach them to one of Raphael's Pokemon. Yes, and uh, of course, uh, Raphael's going to want to you know, be able to get, uh, actually charge up a Veltal in one turn because he was able to get both the Archeopses out. This is something that he hasn't had access to before, so going to be a pretty huge deal. Now, it's going to be interesting to see whether he goes for it this turn or not, because obviously there's like a multitude of pieces that he needs to find in order to make this combo work. Oh, actually, he's going for it. Wow. So, I mean, that must mean Raphael in hand already has a Gust card and the Lost Vacuum. Well, I so say, we, we know he has Lost Vacuum. So yeah. I think we, we saw it earlier. So, yeah, I guess, like you said, he must have a Gust card as well. He's just going for it. Either a Serena or a boss. Yeah, that's the only way this play makes sense. So, Raphael has drawn the exact combo of cards needed to answer Yan's start here. Wow. And and we were just saying, you know, Yan getting the ideal start with that nuts uh, top deck of the... Arceus V-Star, but it's just not going to matter. Like, uh, Raphael can just you know, retreat this Lugia and then bring up the Eveltal, and we know the answers must be there, right? We saw the vacuum, and we must oh, yeah. see the Gus card soon. Yeah, Raphael's well. not going to mess this up. There's not going to be any mistakes for sure. Yeah. Lost Vacuum can discard, excuse me, Lost Zone, that big parasol, send it to the Lost Zone, and here comes a Serena as yes. well. Bring up that Duraludon. Wow. Come to Evil Tall, and amazing destruction. Doesn't do any damage, but it takes that KO. Exactly the perfect combination of cards for Raphael to counter Yan's you know, answer counter to the Lugia deck. And you've got to be feeling pretty sad if you're Yan at this point. I mean, the game's not over yet, not by any stretch, especially given that, you know, your deck is built this way to, you know, beat a deck like Raphael's. But we know for a fact that Yan's other big parasols in the prize cards. Right. But something to note, though, if Yan can just knock out this Evil Tall, Raphael does not have a way to reuse Evil Tall. It doesn't no. have a way to, to get it back. So doesn't even really need the big parasol at this point. Just needs to be able to withstand the potential of a boss's orders or Serena to take out this Duraludon. Yeah, and then at that point, but if uh, if Yan as is more than likely, you know, does take the KO on this Duraludon, Raphael needs to find something to bring up that Duraludon on yes. this turn to KO it before it can become a V Max. Yeah, right now, like ASAP. That's what Raphael needs. Now Yan needs to just hope that Raphael does not have that option. Is going to do everything they can. See the fighting energy come down to the bench. Yeah. It's a couple metal energies. Is there even any in the no, deck? They're on the hand, aren't they? Oh, yep. Had a bunch <laughs> in the hand earlier. That's right. Yeah, I, I mean, given that if you, if you can get the V-Max out, you're pretty safe. I think uh, not being able to power up straight away is fine. But now, yeah, it's all going to come down to whether Raphael can find this answer and KO the bench. I do think I see a quick ball in hand. And as long as that Luminion V is oh, still boy. in the deck, we could see Luminous Sign fetch out the Serena or boss's orders. This might be it. This might be Raphael's, Raphael's way of like actually locking out this unfavorable matchup. And yeah, there it is. Luminion, Luminous Sign. There's a ghost of the boss's orders that works too, of course. 
Um, Primal Turbo, is there enough energy in the deck to get the KO? Surely there must be. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it just needs a couple more. I think there's a couple in hand as well. Doing just a little bit of the math, you're doing 220 base, and you have to account for, you know, Draladon has 220 HP, you need to account for that hard coat ability, which you already are doing since there's a choice belt. So you can just grab a double turbo and a capture, which I think is what Raphael is just making sure of, yeah. and that will still be enough to knock out this Duraludon. Yeah. Maths is very important in Pokemon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got to make sure to work out the numbers, make sure it's all correct. But yeah, the choice belt essentially cancels out the hard coat, and then the, you got the double turbo and the powerful colorless kind of canceling each out as well. So that means 220 against 220, which is Duraludon's HP. So that's an exact knockout. Yes. Raphael just wanting to make sure that nothing gets messed up in the spot. It would feel so bad to be so far ahead and feel like you're in a great spot and then just mess that little bit of math up and then your opponent gets a drought on VMAX in play and then it just kind of goes downhill from there. Yeah, you want to be careful. So there it is. Boss's orders brings up the drought on V and uh, yeah, the, uh, Jan recognizes that that's the exact math and uh, that was going to be enough to KO the Drowled on V, and yet Raphael is now you know, one prize away from winning this game. What do you do if you're Yan in this situation? you got to just knock out this Lugia and hope that your opponent does not have enough powerful colorless energy remaining in the deck in order to power up this, this Lugia V on the bench. Of course, Raphael does still need a Lugia V star. This would be a great time for Yan to maybe go for a Marnie in this spot. Yes. Uh, at this point, it's pretty much this Arceus or Bust. Like, this is the only Pokemon that Yan can have in play for the rest of this game, most likely. No supporter, though. Will just be the knockout. Does Raphael have it? Uh, the, the, his uh, hesitated body language tells me no. Okay. So I imagine he's probably going to have to like dig for it here. So let's see what he can do. I think the main thing we need is the Lugia V-Star. And there is the Evolution Incense. Now the question is going to be how many special energies can you get? You do need three powerful colorless energy here. Are all three of them in the deck? There's one. There's not the other. Is I it think, in I, hand? I think it's in hand. Yeah, yes. there it is. There it is. Raphael with three powerful colorless energy deals 280 damage to knock out the Arceus V-Star and taking this game. Taking this game and the match. Huge congratulations to Raphael. Able to beat the counter deck, overcome the unfavorable matchup and take a 2-1 win in very, very difficult circumstances. Huge, huge congratulations. And you can see Raphael breathing a sigh of relief there. That is, anytime you go up against a deck like that, that is literally built to beat yours, even if you have outs, it is such a stressful game. Yes. Raphael navigated that excellently. Uh, things did not go his way in game number two, drawing all of those energy cards, but was able to keep his resolve, fought back in game three, and was able to win the match. He almost looks in disbelief, right? I mean, he, 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 does play, he did play somebody else, but he's thinking to himself, oh my goodness, you know, that, that could have gone the other way so, so easily. But I was able to find my answers to Jan's counters, and I was actually able to beat what could be, you know, the unfavorable counter deck. And let's, of course, not uh, sell Jan short there. Played great throughout that game. You know, it's a good matchup for you, but you lose good matchups. Even if it's a 70-30, yes. you can roll 30% two times, right, in a uh, in a best of three game. And that's maybe what happened here for Jan in that game. Definitely not out of the tournament by any means. Four and one is still an incredible start to an international championship. So, and there's plenty more Lugias for, for Yan to try to that's, feast on throughout the rest of this that's tournament. That's exactly what I was going to say. Four and one in a field of like a lot of decks that you do very, very well against. I think you've got to be feeling pretty good still. Absolutely. So we'll be trying to get to, to speak to Raphael very soon. I'm definitely interested to see how he feels about that game and especially about how he wanted to approach it, knowing that he had the answers, but how he needed to carefully manage those resources. Like we saw in game number one, holding onto that lost vacuum super early on. Didn't end up playing it in that game, but he recognized how important that card was. Couldn't discard it off the Serena to draw more cards. No, no. Needed to keep it in hand, even though he drew one less card. Yeah, again, I think sort of showing that he recognizes and more certainly built his list with, you know, just enough answers in it to, you know, answer any Arceus Drowsels they may face. Probably aware of the fact that people would be playing it going into this weekend, so, but also, Again, it's about that sort of decision of how much uh, weight do I want to put into countering this whilst at the same time not sacrificing too much of my consistency that I lose everything else. And I guess uh, Raphael managed to find the right balance. Yeah, it worked out very nicely. I mean, Lost Vacuum is a card that I think is really good in that matchup, but it's just kind of randomly useful, right? Yeah, Disrupt your opponent and get rid of an air balloon, right? Slow them down. You can also get rid of a collapsed stadium in play that's kind of hindering you. So, And of course, Path to the Peak as well would probably be the main reason that it's, it's still good, right? Yeah, I think those are the kind of the best kinds of answers to counters that you have is if it's something that, yes, it, it's a good answer to the deck that counters you, but it's something that is also fringe useful in other situations because then it's not just like a dead cardinal as other matchups. And I think that's very important as well. Yes, I'm sure there's been plenty of reasons that Lost Vacuum has gotten used throughout the course of the tournament so far for Raphael 
Raphael. Raphael's a great player as well from Latin America. He's gotten top eight in multiple special events and regionals in the past. So someone who's you know definitely no stranger to success, but has not had a deep run at the Latin American internationals could quite this, yet. Could so this be the year? This very well could be. I mean, and starting five and zero. Oh, what a great place to be, without a doubt. You've got to be thinking, yeah, the, the chances are pretty good, right, for a deep run. Just wait one more in, and then you're basically guaranteed day two by one tie. It's a very, very good position. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase. Raphael did get a top 32 finish, which is, I think we should still consider a deep run at yes. internationals yeah, with how massive these tournaments are. So definitely someone who's done well at this tournament before, but is still, I mean... If you're not in the top eight, it's kind of that's kind of what cements you as like a top tier player, yes, right? Yes, Especially very much at so. this prestige level of event, someone who can make top eight in a field this large with all of the best players in the world participating in the tournament, everyone should recognize you as an excellent Pokemon TCG player without a doubt. Yeah, no doubt at all. I'm very curious as to hear like some of his thoughts on sort of his deck building process, I guess, and when he's thinking about whether you know he was thinking deeply about Arceus Draldon and sort of the yeah, sort of all the other counterbalancing factors in terms of the deck building that go into you know, making his list and uh, and also about that specific matchup as well, how, about, how he felt about you know seeing a handful of like 10 energies or whatever oh, else. Oh gosh, yeah, that game too has to be, <laughs> that is a nightmare for any yes. Lugia player and that's something that'll happen not too irregularly with that deck where you just somehow your energy just find their way into your hand. I mean, I guess you do play usually like 13 or 14 energy cards so it makes sense you'll have a decent amount sometimes but yeah. that feels really bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm, in most Lugia lists I've seen, actually, the count is more like 16. So, you sure. know, they, 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 yeah, they, 16 they, yeah, in Raphael's, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, you absolutely have a chance of seeing your know, hands just clogged for the Benji like that because even when you play that many, that's almost inevitable sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I've even seen people putting a Renguru in their Lugia deck. 